Hey up everybody, welcome back to the Audio Cycling YouTube channel where today we're going to be taking a look at the Vela Games Ghent Verbalgum. It feels like these videos are coming out thick and fast at the moment. So I appreciate all your guys and, and girls' continued support on these videos for watching them. And yeah, let's try and make this another good round. Of course, Van der Poel, he is in this race. Van Aert is not. Obviously, we all know how that went. The other day at E3. Van der Poel is an interesting one. It really depends how you think this race is going to go. Van der Poel is incredibly dangerous for this race. Because it's one of the only Cobble Classic races that he hasn't won. And I'm not saying he's just trying to, you know, tick. he's treating all these like a tick list. But it is one of the only ones he hasn't won. Um, in fact, I think it's now the only, well, one of the only Cobble Classic races he hasn't won. It's going to be a windy day at Gendelvelgum. And let me just provide a scenario for you. Is it possible that Van der Poel could go solo in this race? I think it is. It's only, what, 35 kilometres from that last ascent of the Kemmelberg to the finish line. It's also a really strong tailwind finish. Like, I'm talking like 30 k's an hour tailwind. And it's going to be a crosswind sort of day. Alpsen are probably going to be on the front foot. If Van der Poel goes away solo, which let's face it, nobody in this field is good enough to keep up with him if he goes and attacks. They'll probably have Philipson in group two, because let's face it, he's climbing really well because he won Milano San Remo ahead of guys like, you know, your Pedersons and the other kind of semi good uh, climbing sprinter guys. So it's possible that Van der Poel goes solo and Philipson marks a group behind and nobody wants to chase because they're just going to drag Philipson to a victory anyway. So, could Van der Poel go solo? Could he win? Yes. That would get you likely 540 points. So, I think that Van der Poel is a good shout. He's safe. And, you know, if you want to rest easy in the race knowing that you've got basically the most dangerous attacker in the race on your team, then go with Van der Poel. Pedersen, a couple of question marks after E3, to be honest with you. I'm not sure really what happened there. He came 11th. A bit of a weird one, especially since he goes well in the rain and it started raining at the end, so that was a bit of an odd one. I don't know. Pedersen works well in this race. He's won it before. He's got a good track record of finishing inside the top 10 in the last few years. So therefore, I do think that Pedersen is a good choice. However, with the likes of Stuyven and Jonathan Milan being here as well, maybe it puts Pedersen into a bit of a weird middle ground where I currently think that Stuyven is in better climbing form. So... If Van der Poel were to go solo and there's like a group two formed, which Steuben's in, Pedersen could be in a third group, which might also contain Jonathan Milan. So therefore, would Pedersen end up working for Milan? Like just a couple of like hypothetical scenarios to throw out there. Philipson, I think, is almost a must have pick. He is just, you need you need to have Philipson in your team. Uh, it's just as simple as that. Um, I don't really think I need to explain that. You just really need to be having him. Dali, probably not. Um, to be honest, I just I'm not I'm not liking the vibe from from Dali at the moment. He's just uh, I just think there are better choices. Koi could be one of those if you're looking for another 24 credit rider, just because of how he looked at you know he wasn't dropped too bad at Milano San Remo. He was very good at Paris Nice. He seems to climb fairly well, and without your Van Arts, your Laportes, your Jorgensens here, I expect Visma Lisa bike will be working for Koi. So I think that he is a good choice. I think he's better than Merlier. Personally, I just I think that Merlier is getting dropped in this race. He just hasn't been climbing very well recently. And I just expect him across wins that Alpsen are going to put the hammer down. It's going to reduce the number of Sudar Quickstep teammates. And I just think that on the Kemmelberg, Merlier is getting dropped, personally. I would favour Koi in this scenario to climb better and hang into the group. Merlier... I just got a couple of question marks when it's not just a flat out and out sprint. Mohoric, again, bit of a weird scenario where if there's like a second group which is fighting out for the other podium places, Mohoric could be in there. But, you know, if he's in a group, he's probably not going to win the sprint. But, and, and, if it, and if he's swamped up by a sprinting group, then he's definitely not doing well. He's going to be like 18th place. So Mohoric is a bit of a weird one where He's kind of like a very expensive attacker, which I'm not too confident about executing a, a, a good finish. 22 credit riders. Binny was all right at E3, but he got dropped in like the last literally like 8k. I do expect that he'll be good here, good here, because he has won this race before. So I think that Binny is good. Uh, Matthews I like as well. After all, second place at San Remo, about that far away from winning. 
Yeah, I think that Matthews is good. I reckon he could definitely be in a second group. You know, he's he climbs better than a lot of other sprinters and so I do think that Matthews is a decent choice he's also quite good in crosswinds too which there will be in this race so Matthews is certainly a good one he'll be the leader for Jayco 20 credit riders you've got a bit of a mix of uh, some pure sprinters and some kind of more attacking options I'd say that Stoyven is the safest uh, considering how he looked at E3 obviously in fantastic form and generally when you're in good form you're just getting good results so I think that Stoyven's a good one Tratnik maybe uh, if he's allowed off the leash by Lisa Bike, then I'm not just protecting Koi. Maybe he could be good. And Kung as well as an attacking option isn't too bad. But I'd say that Stoyven's your safest. Trenton you could go with as well. I reckon he's, you know, another one who could fit into a lot of scenarios. But yeah, I just think that Stoyven's probably your best one at, eight, uh, at 20. 18 credit riders. Uh, Pollock was good the other day at E3. Uh, Milano... I mean, if you really think that that's a that's a big differential pick, I just I'm not sure if I see him making like making that group. But you know, if he does, he he'll be right up there. Uh, Zingler is surprisingly fast in the finish as well, and yeah, Sheffield I think they'll be working for Navarro. So probably Pollitt, Zingler, or Milano as the 18 credit riders that that are the best. 16 credit riders, an interesting mix. You got Bennett here as like a pure sprinter. He will be the leader for Decathlon. I just... I don't know how much I rate his chances in this race. If it is just like a pure sprint, then yeah, he'll be fine. I just think back to that edition where he was, you know, a really strong Sam Bennett. Like one of the best Sam Bennett's we've seen. And he was like throwing up on the back of a group. So I just have that envisionment with Sam Bennett in this uh, in this race. I think that he could be good, but a bit risky. Lamperty fits into a very small bracket where if Merlier's has dropped... He could get given the green light to just fight for his own opportunity. But again, that's a little bit risky to be banking on on that scenario panning out. Uh, Corbin Strong could be a decent choice. But Israel do also have Jake Stewart and Tom Van Asbluck, who could both also f try fight for the Israel Premier Tech leadership. So that's a little bit of a, another question mark there. Uh, Dreesen Hestel has finished on the podium in this race. Think back to that Biniger, my win. Uh, so I think that he's good. He's been... Looking in decent form recently, so Van Hestel I've, I've got no problems with. And Van Poppel, of course, was third in Blue de Pan the other day. So he's obviously in good form. And Bora, without a big leader, Van Poppel should be should be their guy. So that's also a pretty nice one to be picking. 14 credit riders. Uh, I think the best ones are towards the bottom here. Milan, very fast sprinter. If you think that it's going to come back for a sprint, Milan's definitely one who you need to be having in your team. Morgado you could bank on as an attacking option but he wasn't really there in E3 so I'm not confident about that. Navarez on the other hand much better, much safer. If there is an attacking group I expect Navarez to be fully in the mix and Ineos should really be focusing around him as their leader. And then you got Piffy who did very good for his debut at Milano San Remo the other day so I'm not worried about the, the distance being a problem here. And I think the group Palmer should be really around him. They've got Kung and Aski and Sam Watson here and there's like a crosswind group I think that's really good and if they focus around Piffy he could get a really good result here for sure 12 credit riders like I said the aforementioned Jake Stewart and Van Asbluck I think that honestly Van Asbluck is a little bit underrated he has been in good form recently and he could certainly crack a top 15 in this race 10 credit riders you've got Case Ball probably leading Astana he was 18th 19th in Milano Torino which was a hilly race so I think that Ball is a good one uh, for a top 20 in this race, I'd say. Owain Dool without Betiol here, or really a pure sprinter at all. Owain Dool, he came top 20 in this race last year, and I definitely see that being a possibility again. Maybe Van Uden, if you think that he can make it over the climbs. Brent Van Moor was decent in E3. Eight credit riders, uh, Akoff possibly. If Van Uden gets dropped, then Akoff should be their kind of de facto leader, I suppose. Ugo Page, if you think that Binny gets dropped, then they'll probably go with him. Or maybe Maddie's Mikels as well. But yeah, other than that, honestly, these V8s the just aren't... They're, they're just not they're not doing it for me, to be honest with you. Six credit riders, again, not too many to be picking from. You're really looking at guys who might get in a breakaway and hang on to a good finish because they're just like up the road ahead of all the crosswind mania that's going on. So I'm looking at guys like maybe Gotolat could be good if you don't think that Bennett's that great. Then Gotolat is a really good 
option at six. I think that he is pretty low risk to be going with, in all honesty. Jonier was ninth at Blues de Pass, so you could go with him because there's no Jason Tasson here. So I think that Jonier, he was sixth or seventh at Kerner, Brussel Kerner, kind of similar to this race, you could say, in a way, except for the distance, of course. So Jonier, I quite like as a as an outside option. He should be the leader for um, for the total. Energy's team, Matisse Labelle, loves a breakaway, so that's a good one to be going with. Uh, Mikels, another semi sprint of the Intermarche. Uh, Meyerhofer is again, uh, you could go with him if you know, maybe you think him and Trenton could be a good combination to be going with. There's also, you know, another breakaway guy, Matthias Norsgaard, he was in the break the other day at E3, so you could go with him if you think that he's going to get in the breakaway again. Jonas Luch, again, like I said. They don't have a big sprinter here, so I expect EF to try and get into the break. And I think that Rooch has been showing some tendencies to do that based upon Paranese. So he's a good one. Uh, Steimler has been loving breakaways as well. Seemingly like a new breakaway expert. Now he's joined Q36.5. So I think that another one to be banking on to try and get into the breakaway there. Uh, so I think that you got a couple there who could finish top 30, top 25. Or you're looking at riders to get into the breakaway. Uh, four credit riders, you've got... Um, Lars Kraps, which has got to be the most unfortunate name uh, there's ever been. Um, you could go with him if you're kind of looking for the uh, the humour factor. Emil Erzog was in a break at E3 the other day. Is he going to have been able to recover from that? He was dropped from that breakaway group, so obviously not like the strongest rider. But Bora, with only Danny Van Poppel here as their leader, maybe you could favour going with some of their guys in the breakaway. Morrow was in the break at uh, on loop, so that sets a good precedent for getting in the break again. And then you've got Rook and Gray and Todom for other options to get into the break because EF don't have a big leader in this race. So that's really kind of where I'm at with all the four credit riders. This is my team at the moment. I'm going with a scenario where I think that Vanderpool is going to shoot off into the distance and solo that last from the last Kemmelberg for the last 35k because I think that the tailwind finish and a lack of organization behind will really favour the attackers and then I'm expecting a second kind of strong man group to form which will include Steuven and Philipson marking out the moves and Piffy in there as well. I think that Philipson could sweep in a second place meaning that Vanderpool and Philipson both get assist points off of each other and then Steuven and Piffy maybe come in like inside the top 10 and then I've got two guys in hopes that they get into the breakaway. Um, if you wanted something a little bit different, I did have a team which was like Michael Matthews. You put those points onto Airzog and you get yourself another 14 credit rider. You could go with Milan or Navarez, depending on which way you think the race is going to go. So you could end up with a team like this instead. Or you could go with a team which is completely like sprinter orientated with Merlier and Coy um, in here as well instead of Steuven. So you get Merlier in there. Uh, then you take Navarez off and get yourself like a an eight credit rider, whichever one you think is great, ache off. Uh, you could go with something like that if you think it's going to be a pure sprint. Um, but let me know what you're thinking in the comments section down below. How do you think this race is going to pan out? Do you think that Van der Poel could just solo off to victory and get Bevelgum like he did with E3? He's looking incredibly strong and I really wouldn't put it past him. But let me know what you're thinking in the comments section down below. And all that is left to say is to stay safe out there. I will see you in my next video. Salut!